Hello, fifth grade. Today we are going to be working on G6 convert decimals between standard and expanded form. Let's talk about what standard form means. Can you tell me what, what are your thoughts on what standard form means? If you said something like number four or 100 or 201, um, you are absolutely correct. What would you consider then to be expanded form? Expanded form. So maybe something like um, 2 plus 2 is an expanded form for what number? If you said 4, you were correct. So this is the standard form, and this is the expanded form. Some fancy language, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, move into this lesson. I'm always going to encourage you to learn with example. Anytime you see the learn with example, please take a moment to look over it, okay? So I see it talks about a place value chart. Well, if you've been working with me, we have a place value chart. You either have it already printed off or you know where to retrieve it if you're one of my students. If not, I just want you to Google any fifth grade place number and place value chart, okay? So we also have here, oh, so they're placing the numbers in the place value chart. That makes sense. So I noticed that the first number is the digit to the left of the placeholders. So it is our whole number, nine times one. We know that is a whole number nine. So I also notice that when there is one digit in our math question after the decimal, so 0 0.1 or 0 and 1 tenths, that it goes in the tenths column. Then when I'm multiplying by two decimal place values to the left, or to the right, I'm sorry, it says five times zero and zero one or one one hundredths, that number goes in the hundreds column. Okay, so with that being said, let me go ahead and help you. I'm gonna tell you something that I want you to put in your memory bank and keep it there till you hit high school and then it's just gonna be permanent because in seventh grade and eighth grade and high school, you're gonna use what I'm about to tell you. Are you ready? Because it's really important. Anytime you have multiple operations, I want you to do your adds last, your adds and subtracts last, okay? In this lesson, it is read like this. Are you ready? It's going to be read as nine times one added to five times 0 0.1 added to five times 0.01. So notice I have to multiply all of those things first and then find what it equals last by adding last. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear our screen and let's get started. Nine times one. What is nine times one? It is nine. Good job. Okay, that's easy enough. Nine and that's our whole number because my next two operations have decimals in them. Okay. So now let's do 5 times 0 0.1. Well, what is 5 times 0 0.1? Here is the shortcut of a lifetime. Whenever you're multiplying your decimals, simply multiply without the decimal. Add the decimal to your answer. There's one decimal in your math question. There's going to be one decimal in your answer. So notice this is going to be 0 0.5 that I'm adding to it. So now let's go ahead and do this last one. 5 times 1 one hundredth. Again, 5 times 1 is 5. But this time I have two place values, two that I need to move and add in my answer. So let's do that. 5 times 1 is 5 but I have two digits after my place value or my decimal. So now I have to have two place values. So 0 
Well, if you notice, whenever I'm adding them, they just fall right in a line. 9.55 is my final answer. And let's put all of that in with my messy screen. My handwriting really isn't that bad. It's this new marker I'm using. Okay, 9.55 and submit. There we go. Okay, the whole value is, the whole key is multiply first. Good. And then multiply your other one first, add those two together, or just put them in the same column. So are you ready? Two times zero, one. Two times one, add one place value, two tenths or point two. Nice job. So which of these has a point two? Oh, that one has a point two. Okay, are you ready? Let's add that two. 8 times 1. How many decimal places do I have in my question? I have 2. I have 1, 2 right here. 2. 1, 2. So that's going to be 0 0.08. So it's going to be 0 0.28. Good job. Nice job. Let's do it again. Are you ready? We don't even need a calculator. 6 times 1. Is that That's going to be a whole number, isn't it? So six times one, if I'm using my chart, my six is gonna go right here, six point something. So let's find out what it is. So I already know which could be my answer. If you said 6.92, let's just do it and show how quick and easy this lesson could be. Nice job. Let's do this one. Seven times one, we're gonna add to that three times one tenth. Ooh, seven times one. Oh, it looks like it could be this first one, 7.03 or 7.3. Can you tell me already? Is it the seven and three hundredths or is it seven and three tenths? Three times 0 0.1. How many decimal places are after? If you said 7.3, you are awesome. You're rocking it. You are ready to go. I hope that this lesson helps you in order to understand the values between standard and expanded form and then converting those into standard. So you guys have a great and wonderful day. Come back and see me if you need more math help.